This is what I call the people's headphone. It's a Philips X2HR, a now discontinued open back headphone that I think is underrated by the community. While these headphones aren't particularly loved by audiophiles, I think they actually serve a greater purpose and I want to talk about that. Welcome back to D Show and Tell. If you're new here, I cover all things tech, phones, computers, audio and more. So please subscribe and hit the bell icon if that's your fetish too. So today I'm going to review the Philips X2HR. It's technically a discontinued headphone that's been replaced by the Philips X3. The X3 has had mixed reviews to say the least, mostly due to its high price. The X2HR on the other hand are surprisingly still being sold on Amazon and go on sale often. I paid around 170 Aussie dollars delivered sent from Amazon UK which equates to about 115 US dollars but usually go for closer to 190. They do go on sale often so I probably wouldn't pay full price for these. First and foremost, these are my own opinions on these headphones. You may feel differently about them and that's fine so share your thoughts in the comment section below. So in the box you get a 1 8 to a quarter inch adapter, a 3 meter 3.5 millimeter cable and of course a manual. Nothing too special with the presentation so let's just move on to the headphones. They are a larger than normal pair of headphones and honestly do look a bit ridiculous on the head. But remember these are open back over ear that will leak sound and are intended for home use only. So even if you look like a fool, at least it will be just in front of your loved ones. So the construction of these are really, really solid. The weight comes in at 380 grams, which is on the heavier side, but in combination of the very comfortable mesh suspension strap means that I had no hot spots and I could wear these for hours. At the top, it's finished in a black leather with Philips Fidelio embossed. Onto the ear cups, the grill and yoke are made of metal. The ear cups themselves are made of plastic. The ear pads are a memory foam with velour. They're incredibly comfortable, and while they do warm up after long use, never uncomfortably so. They also go over my ears just fine without touching any part and are adequately deep. In case you've got weird elf ears, I'll put the measurements of the ear pad space up on screen. All in all, these are hands down my most comfortable headphones. Every other headphone I own would have one or two minor complaints here and there, but for these in my use and for my above average sized head are just the best. Looks wise, I think they look great, but not so much on the head. I'm also not a fan of the lint and gunk catching velour material they've used on the pads. They are comfortable, but even with some use, start to collect anything they come in contact with. It's actually bothered me enough to buy a pair of Dacroni velour pads that don't have that problem. And speaking of the pads, they are removable with a clip-in mechanism with a simple grab and pull. All you gotta do is line them up and press them in to push them back in. The Dukoni suede pads are specifically for the X2HR as you can see at the back, but these are pretty expensive at around 65 US dollars. But that just goes to show how much I love these headphones. With the ear cups removed, you can see an angled 50mm dynamic driver. These headphones are 30 ohm impedance and 100 decibel sensitivity, so you can drive them off anything, no amp required. Though depending on your device, you might want to get a separate DAC. I also want to quickly touch on the 3.5mm jack on the headphones. It is a one-sided jack and because it's 3.5mm, you can stick in a Bluetooth adapter to make these wireless if you need to cut the cord for whatever reason. The one I have here is a U-Green which comes with APTX low latency which works relatively well but just doesn't look very elegant. So let's talk about how these sound. These are a classic V-shaped headphone. The bass on these are absolutely banging. They go deep, have a nice smooth bear hugging warmth and never felt bloated in delivery which is surprising for an open back headphone which tends to have a more mid emphasis. Vocals are clean and in combination with a wide soundstage make for a fantastic listening experience but of course as expected are recessed along with mids in general. Highs are well balanced never being sharp or unpleasant just chill in the Goldilocks zone. You take all these things together and you've got a fun banging listening experience. If you have a mainstream taste in music, these are going to sound great on all your tracks. For games, these are also fantastic, especially for titles where you really want that immersion. The same goes with movie epics. If you play games competitively, there are some other headphones that do take the cake in regards to imaging. But hey, just like its performance in music, this is about having a good time, not about getting too serious. For context as well, I've run this off my Soundblaster X G6 gaming DAC amp, which has an inbuilt acoustic engine I use when I want to do some easy EQ, and these headphones react great to them. That is going to work great for those that might want to put a bit more in the vocals or the highs. 
So how does this compare to headphones like the Drop Sennheiser 58X or the 6XX, which is what most people will regard as a gold standard of headphones? I think that most people are going to enjoy the X2HRs more. It's a far more mainstream friendly headphone, and when you're putting down money at this price, the person tends to be dipping their toes in audiophile gear for the first time, or somebody who might not have the budget to spend big, and need a jack of all trades without the need of an amp costing even more money. For the newcomer, what are they coming from? A pair of Sony XM4s, Bose QC35s, or perhaps Beats by Tim? If you like those headphones, these are going to give you a similar experience but better, and that's what I think they're going to be looking for. My first dabble with the 58X and the 6XX, I came out a little bit underwhelmed by the anemic sub bass going from my mainstream headphones to something with a very different sound signature, which was quite disappointing for me. But nowadays, in cycling through my pairs, I've come to enjoy a different sound once in a while. Audiophile leaders aren't really a fan of the X2HR. To them, it's too bassy, not enough detail, and the list goes on. But what they don't realize is that these headphones have got to be one of the most important headphones right now. You must be thinking, what the hell are you on about? Mate, let me explain. These straddle a price point and a sound signature that makes it like no other in the market. It's a true gateway headphone. Firstly, a newcomer. Imagine you're browsing on the internet and you found out that there's this thing called open back headphones. You're curious, so you research a bit more. Before you know it, you'll want to buy a pair. Should you just go down the $220 for the well-regarded 6XXs or $115 for a pair of X2HRs? But know the audience. The X2HR sound signature is going to appeal more to the mainstream. You would rather get the person halfway with the X2HRs than disappoint with a 6XX and the more people we can get to appreciate this hobby, I think is a win for the community. And after you win them over with the X2HR, curiosity and pleasure will do the rest of the work. We know it's definitely not going to be their last headphone, even though I personally believe it could be. It's definitely the headphone that has spent the most time on my head. It is the most versatile headphone I have, it's the most comfortable, it doesn't need an amp and can be run off anything, the 3.5mm jack allows it to be converted wireless, the sound signature is energetic and fun which makes it suitable for my taste in music, non-competitive gaming and it's excellent for movies. It's not technically impressive but it's not meant to be. So in regards to getting your hands on these, if you do struggle to get them where you are at a reasonable price, an alternative are the Philips Fidelio X1S, which are a Chinese market Fidelio X1, I believe. I was using these for the longest time before picking up the X2HR. I picked them up off AliExpress, and for the longest time, I wondered if there was much difference to the X2HRs. They are more or less the same thing, same build but different color scheme with a brown headband and silver colored yoke, which might be your preference. Sound wise, they are nearly identical. I did believe that the vocals and highs sound just a smidge richer on the X2HRs by using them back to back, but again, that could just come down to placebo. So don't be afraid to pick up the X1Ss instead if it's a better price or you prefer the color scheme. Links are all down below. If you've watched the video all the way through, thank you again. I appreciate it more than you would imagine. I will be doing an entry headphone shootout with all the popular ones from the $100 to $250 price range, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss that. New videos every week, and until the next one, bye bye